Hi guys, I'm Tracy from Grizzly Knits. Thank you for coming to my knitting podcast. It is episode 31 and I'm so glad that you returned. Um, if you have returned, if you're new here, I talk about knitting and yarn and all the things that I'm making and involved in and welcome. So please subscribe if you uh, think that this interests you and um, welcome back to all my returning viewers. Thank you so much for all the sweet comments you left about um, that you missed me and you were so happy to, to come again and see me again. And that was really, really thoughtful and really nice. So I did two weeks, I'm back um, to show you some finished objects. Uh, what I've talked about, finished objects, what I'm doing, what I'm going to make, and I want to talk about my very first Mal that I hope you're going to join in. Uh, okay, so let's get started. First finished, uh, oh, first I should say, I think I said who I am, Tracy, from Toronto, Canada. You can find me, I always forget that part. You can find me in, uh, at Instagram, I'm Grizzly Knits. Um, and you can, where else can you find me? I'm pretty active on Instagram. Uh, I will leave my email below if you want to email me or, you, or um, and on Ravelry, <laughs> don't forget that, I am Grizzly Knits as well. I do have an Etsy shop where I make stitch markers and progress keepers. Um, and it's called Grizzly and it's on Etsy. But everything you need to know will be linked down below if I forget anything, which I probably will, because I always forget things. Okay, <sighs> first finished object is right here. I finished my Nancho by Casapinka. I think I talked a little bit about this last time. Um, I, I think I was, did I even add in the first color? I may not have even added in the first color. But it is done and it is super cute. I am so happy with this. So this is a fingering weight poncho called a noncho. And this version is, there's two versions when you buy it. And this is the light version made in fingering weight yarn. And it's a really easy knit. Um, and it just, you know, there's some increases. You increase on each side and that what makes like a little bit of a pattern um increase here across which i loved doing those increases if you can see there it's like a pattern increase which is so cute and i did modify the only thing i did modify was i did an i-cord bind off because now i'm obsessed with i-cord bind offs and I did it in the contrasting color. Yeah, so I'm very happy. Uh, the yarn that I used, I got two skeins of this for my birthday. So I have another one to use. This is full, uh, full, full moon fibers. And she is in Barrie, Ontario. I was just talking about Barrie, Ontario this morning because there's a fiber festival in August in Barrie that I really want to go to. And this is the color Sterling. Gorgeous yarn. I loved using it. And then I put it together with my Sorella um, from the Disneyland collection, Pirates of the Caribbean, that I got a couple years ago. And it was just perfect. So... That is done and ready to be worn. It's warming up a little bit. We had, like, if you can believe it, a snowstorm this uh, week, but temperatures are warming up. Maybe I will get to wear it soon, I hope. Um, oh, one more modification. I did go up, uh, I went up to a four millimeter needle and I usually do go up in all my projects at least half a, um, a needle because I'm a tight knitter just in case you're interested. Okay, I did something else. I made some socks. Here they are. 
So I made a pair of shorty socks and they were so much fun. I started them on, oh my goodness, let me see. I think I started them, yeah, I started them on Friday and I finished them on Monday. I'm still only knitting one project at a time and it was really interesting, a lot of your comments on asking me questions about that or telling me, yeah, that's what you do or um, just reasons behind it. So for those of you who are new, I used to have a ton of whips going at the same time. And then I just decided to do a little experiment. What would happen to my mind if I just did one at a time? And I am absolutely loving it. It is a bit strange at the beginning because you're so used to having so much to choose from. But once, like just for me, once I got into it and then I started seeing like progress so quick, like my, my husband said, wow, you're knitting so much faster. And I'm like, no, I, I'm not knitting faster. I'm just like concentrating more and focused more. It's just really working out for me. Anyway, back to the socks. But if you have a ton of whips, I enjoy watching you show your whips as well. So it's all good. Anything that you do that makes you happy is good and knitting. So um, these are, this is a pattern by Dana Ray Makes. And when you buy the pattern, you get three patterns. This one is her textured socks three ways. I think she has another pattern out for thicker socks. Um, and this is the thinner, the finger weight, fingering weight. So she gives you like amazing instructions. For those of you who are a bit new, I would definitely... Um, <clears throat> recommend this pattern. I found it extremely clear and I really, really liked it. And it's all like the the ways I like doing things, like the heel and gusset. Like you have to find what works for you. Um, but this one was very clear and I think you could put in your own ways very easily. So the, the she gives you the three patterns and my pattern was the dots and lines pattern. So I'll just show you a little closer up. So I did shorties. So I did five rows of rib, two by two rib. Then I did five rows of the pattern. Then I put in my heel and they fit really well. I've never done shorties this short before. So I'm looking forward to wearing them and seeing if I like them making more. Yarn. Okay, this is the bad part. I don't know where I got this. I don't know where I got it. And I didn't put, it was all wound up. So it's like I wound it up to do another project, didn't do that project, lost the tag, and just put it in my yarn. So I'm really sorry. I And it's a beautiful yarn. I don't know if this, if you recognize this, let me know. Um, so that's the main part. Then the toes, heels, and Cuffs, I'm probably going to regret because I have dogs and muddy backyards and all the rest, but I did it in light pink because it was just so pretty, but I will live to regret that. This is leftover um, Autumn and Indigo in her pink sock base that I got quite a long time ago. So yeah, we'll just enjoy them while they're fresh and pretty. <laughs> Maybe I won't even wear them. No, I got to wear them. Um, anyway, so those are the two things that I finished uh, over the two weeks. Let me just take a sip. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to show you my whip. Now my whip was, was, it was, it, it was a crazy time. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. As focused as I think I am, I'm not. So I had in my head, I wanted to do um, a tank top and everything went wrong. I The pattern I picked, which I'm not gonna show you now because I do wanna use it in the future, it just didn't look good with the yarn. And then I did something else and picked another pattern. And I was just like, all over the place, like 
almost frantic. Like I couldn't, and when you have one project, okay, this is a backstory. We were watching The Ultimatum. I don't know if you watched that kind of TV, but I do. And um, it was like, I was watching with my husband who hates stuff like that. And I finally got him on board to watch this. So he's like, okay, come on. Like we got to watch the next show. And I didn't have my knitting project because it didn't go right during the day and I had nothing to work on at night and I had to move fast or I was going to lose him and he was going to turn something on, some documentary, but I had to know what happened in the ultimatum. So I had, I, I, it was just a mess. Like I, so then I, I thought, forget tanks. I'll just grab a sweater, a pattern I had, and I'll grab some yarn. And that, it just didn't work out. I, I did knit that whole night on a pattern and a, and a cardigan. And it, the next day I looked at it, I'm like, this doesn't even look good. I don't even like this yarn. Like it was just a mess. So that was four days of mess. So that really put me behind in my two weeks of being proud of finishing things. So yesterday I was like, it's a fresh day. I went on, I found this pattern that I've, ha I've wanted to make for a while. So we're putting the tank idea on the side and now we're back to cardigan. So Petite Knit has a cardigan that I think is absolutely adorable and it's called the Novice Cardigan and it's her chunky edition. So the idea is for you to use a worsted weight yarn, putting it together with a mohair yarn. And of course, all my worsted, sorry, yeah, all my worsted, I didn't have any quantities for sweaters that I liked. I didn't even have any mohair, enough to do a sweater. So then I went on the Ravelry page and most people did it in drops um, with the mohair. And I love, oh, sorry, drops air. And I love drops air. I've worked with it before. So then I'm online buying yarn. Like we've gone from using up everything I have to making a tank top to making a cardigan and buying yarn. And um, I could have bought yarn. I could have bought the drops. But then I remembered a yarn store about 20 minutes from me sold drops. So, you know, like you get obsessed. So you're like, okay, I can go to the dentist, go to the drugstore, and then go to Aurora, which is 20 minutes from me, and go to this yarn store. So that's what I did, but it did, that's what it did, I did. But it didn't work out because she only had three colors left and I did not like those colors. So here I am in a yarn store with the idea I wanna make this, with the, I know I don't have yarn. So she had a, a, a sweater hanging as a sample. Oh, the yarn store is called Needles and Knit, if you're interested. Um, and I loved this sweater. I'm like, what, what is that? Where is, where, what, where is this from? What kind of yarn is this? So she said, oh, it's a chunky yarn, a bulky yarn, the same as in this pattern. Here it is. Of course, it's super expensive. Because <laughs> that's my luck. But I thought... I'm small, I only need five balls. <laughs> so we did it. And I would never have chosen this yarn uh, just by seeing this yarn. I would never have chosen it online. So, hey, it's by Barocco and it is called, I don't know, Piro, Pirouette, Pirouette, Pirouette. I'm probably butchering that. And it's almost like like a boucle, like is that what they call it? It's like a little nibbies, not like it's really soft. Knit up, it reminded me like almost like a teddy bear, like a stuffed animal. I'll just tell you what it's made of. And I mean, I say expensive, but it wasn't like hand dyed yarn expensive but it was just kind of a lot for a morning when I didn't expect to buy yarn that expensive 
So it's baby alpaca, moran, uh, wool, 41% wool, 41% baby alpaca, and 18% nylon. So we brought, we brought her home <laughs> with her sisters and we started it and I'm extremely happy so far. So this is what's happening. And you know, it, it's just gonna be a plain gray sweater, which is a little boring after making like exciting things, but boy oh boy, is it gonna be good like to have in my wardrobe, a plain cardigan, a plain gray cardigan. So this is it so far. And guys, it's super soft and light, which I, I think is gonna be really pretty. Like it, this is a light sweater. Like you, you could bring this like anywhere, even in the summer, even on a summer's evening, I could see you wearing this because it, it's almost like holy, I guess that's the nature of this yarn, but I'm happy. And I have a little progress keeper. I think I got this from the Toronto Knitters Frolic a few years ago. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a little bike. It's so cute. Oh, and I'm keeping everything in my Jenna Rose bucket bag that I got for my birthday this year, which I love so much. It's just so perfect. So that was the craziness of whips. Like, I don't know if you guys, you probably are more organized than me, but it did show me I really need to like get a couple of projects in the lineup so that I don't like get into that position again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that's that. So that was something I bought, yarn that I bought. And I have something else that came through the mail, which is really, really nice. So I, I think I mentioned in my last podcast how I really like um, trying new subscriptions. As much as I love picking what I want, something there's something about co something coming through the mail. You don't know what it is. You know which yarn. Like it's just very exciting. <laughs> so I was watching the grocery girls and Tracy Miller was talking about a Canadian company called things created equal. And I decided to sign up for their monthly subscription. So this is their March. So I think I'm, I'm safe showing. I haven't gotten April's yet. So this is their March. This was the inspiration photo. And for those of you who watch Grocery Girls, which I'm sure most of you do, because it's such an amazing podcast, um, you've seen this. Um, but the way it came wrapped, oh my goodness, so much like thought and care. Um, some money goes to planting trees. So she did a little thank you for planting a tree, which I love. And the yarn is gorgeous. So this is, I think I chose DK. Yes, I chose a DK because I'm thinking I'd like to make some DK socks and see how that feels. And if not, I, I don't have a ton of DK. Oh, she's from Mountain View County, Alberta. And this is, I don't know, there's no name unless the name is rooted. I don't, or is that, no, Rooted is the subscription. So I don't know. I don't see it anywhere. Um, it's 85 super wash merino and 15% nylon, a four ply DK weight, and one stain is 246 yards. And it's just really beautiful. You can choose how you um, want it shipped. So if you want to save a bit of money, which I was good with, she ships it flat and uh, the shipping is like $3, I think. And then, but the nice thing she does is she puts in her tag like this 
and the sticker of what it is, the, the, the type of yarn. So you just twist it. It's really easy. And then you just, I just use tape and I put it on. So I really like that. And it came with this really sweet little stitch marker. Again, like she just adds a lot to detail and you can tell that she's just putting a lot of her heart into her business. And I absolutely love that. So that was my, my nail. I'm really excited about that. Okay, last thing. I want to do a mal. Like, not, oh, wait, not last thing. I forgot to tell you something. <gasps> okay, quickly, let me just, before I go into the whole mal thing, um, I've been watching a lot of Four City Knit Girls who I absolutely adore, all three of them. They are so fun and they have, they have a podcast and um, they are such beautiful knitters, like such inspiration with their knitting and the colors they choose and the yarn. And I just love them. Anyway, they are running a mal. Um, it's Year of the Socks. So I'm going to post a picture of these into Year of the Socks. I think shorties are allowed. Oh, before I go ahead and do that, I will have to <laughs> read the rules. But um Anyway, yes, I'm going to go into Ravelry and they, they have Year of the Socks where they, you can post pictures of your socks and then every month they pick winners for prizes and it's a lot of fun. So that got me thinking, I've always wanted to do a Mal, um, like run run one, but I, I nothing has ever come to me. Um, so I am running a Mal with Birch and Lily, Amanda from Birch and Lily. She has... A podcast. She has. Uh, she's a yarn dyer, a beautiful yarn dyer from Michigan, and together we have come up with something that I think is going to be a lot of fun. So we are running a mal starting May first to July first, and it is called Bloom Baby Bloom Mal. I'll put that underneath in the description. And what it is, is it's going to be a flower-based mal. So you can knit or crochet anything that has flowers um, incorporated into it, flowers on it, or even flower name, a flower name in the pattern. That will be an entry. So we're going to open it up on Ravelry. We're going to have our own group where you can post finished object pictures um, and, you know, you can chat. And we're also going to use the hashtag Bloom Baby Bloom Mal. And that way we can um, see your finished objects on there as well. And then at the end of the Mal, we are going to pick some winners. So, so far, um, I am going to donate some, uh, I'm going to make some special stitch markers and progress keepers for a prize. And Amanda is going to dye some yarn. Um, so we're going to have those two prizes, which are going to be fun. And if any of you are makers and you would like to donate uh, prizes, that would be amazing. If you're in Canada, maybe you could send them to me just because shipping would be better for you or whatever you want. And Amanda's in the US, so that might be less costly for you. Um, or you can do whatever you want. You can send both of us or you can, whatever you want. Uh, we would be grateful and it would be just amazing to get some more prizes so we can have more winners. So we would absolutely love if you could join in and start thinking about what you would like to make. Um, so that's why I, I wore my flower pressed shawl by Savory Knitting that I made um, in March. I do, I talk about all the details in the last video. Um, I absolutely loved making it. I wear it all the time. Um, and 
that this is actually when so many of you wrote, oh, I, that's on my list. I want to make that. I That's what kind of got me thinking about, oh, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a flower mal? Um, so that's good. And I want to show you what I'm going to be making. So once I'm finished my sweater, I am going to be starting something for the mal as well. This is something that I think is so gorgeous, but I'm not making it crop. Just want to put that out there. This is the Lazy Daisy Crop by Rachel Kurihara. So it's a tank with a embroidered flower sewn on, which I have no idea how to do. But I'll figure it out. Or I think she has a video and she the instructions are really good. So this is going to be my, um, for the Mal, for the Bloom Baby Bloom Mal. And I picked out my yarn. Oh, where's my little, oh, here it is. Picked out my yarn. So a few months ago, I did a yarn swap with Daphne from Ro Rose Opal Knits, which is another podcast that I watch and I absolutely love, Erica and Daphne. And um, she sent me to swap with some yarn that I had that was a little bit brighter that I wasn't going to use. This gorgeous girl right here. This is by Willow Tree Yarn in Pumpkin. And I love it. It is so pretty. So I'm going to do the tank this color. And then the flowers... I thought that would look really pretty. This is when I did the subscription pin and pip, and it is Rocky Mountain Yarn Co. in their Thunderbird. I love that. And then you need a third color for the little tiny dot in the daisies. And I'm just doing this. I don't even know where this is from. It's just a little bit of white, kind of off-white. So that's going to be my uh, Lazy Daisy crop, which I'm really excited about. So I'm just going to work on my sweater and then go to my Lazy Daisy crop. Okay, so I think that's it. So we talked about the Mal and we talked about, I think, everything else. Um, I hope everyone is doing really, really well. Thank you again for all your comments and your um, your. Welcome back wishes. They were really, really nice. So I hope everyone is going to join in on our Mal. It starts May 1st. Amanda's going to be talking about it on her podcast, which is probably coming up in the week. Um, and again, I'll write all the details down below and everything that I've talked about in case you're interested in looking at these patterns or the yarn yourself. And that's it. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye-bye.